It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our go. Hey! It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. I am Tom Papa. Thank you for joining us for another glorious episode. We have Jackie Cation on the program, who's one of my... Good friends, a very funny comedian. We've known each other for a long time. She actually was on an earlier Breaking Bread during the Quar back in uh, the the before times. <laughs> um, I'm very excited. If you are looking at this right now, you will see a bowl of Halloween candy. And that is what I'm offering Jackie today because Halloween has just passed. And I baked bread for her. And my guests at my Halloween party ate it. So <laughs> my compensation is bringing her Halloween candy, which I'm sure I know she will enjoy because we already did the interview. Uh, happy Halloween to you. We're in November now, kids. Very exciting. It's Thanksgiving month. Very exciting. I kicked off with a big chili that I made for the um, Halloween party over at the house it's been a uh, 20 year tradition now and the chili is so second nature i just know how to make it from years of experience i also know not to use a uh, a wooden spoon when you are you make it the night before and then the next day it's a little hard and you got to start stirring it don't use a wooden spoon as i did one year and end up with a splintered wooden spoon in the chili that you are going to serve guests in a mere four hours. Uh, little things. This is what experience brings you. But it was such a great thing because it is such a, it's one of those meals that is just a sign of the season. And it was a big hit. No beans. I just go tons of chopped meat and uh, little peppers and onions to start off. And then you go seasoning crazy just there's nothing better than taking whole three ounce jars of chili powder and just pouring them into what you're making uh probably four of them i think it was 12 pounds of beef and it just came out great and it was just so great it's what this is one of those things when you're not struggling to learn how to do something new you're just kind of reminding yourself i'll glance at the recipe of course but um you just know the rhythm and you know how it's done and you know it's going to come out great such a great way to turn the corner, wrap up Halloween, and served all these people, made them very happy, and now we are just full bore with Thanksgiving in our sights, and it sounds like it's going to be a big crowd. So what I would like to do over the next uh, couple of weeks is lean in on Thanksgiving and share a little bit about what I'm thinking and what I'm making and what I'm preparing and some things that you can do ahead of time so you can... Even if you're not going to be hosting and doing a big Thanksgiving, it's good to make some of these things like cranberries, etc., that you can just have on your every day as we plow through November and December. So that is our focus here at Breaking Bread. And, of course, the focus is introducing ourselves and you to great people. We have a lot of great guests from the food world coming up over the next couple of months, next couple of weeks. And we also have a lot of really good comedy people so what more do you want we've got comedy we've got food people we've got the holidays we've got a good healthy emergence into this next season it's so different from last year last year's halloween party we did it in shifts i was reminded of it at the party that we literally had like these three people that hung out and they stayed for an hour and split and then the next six people came in because they all were in their same little pod and then they left yesterday when um everyone was over the house just filled with people no masks all vaxxed all having a great time getting get, having have, having gotten through it all so i'm hopeful for a good holiday season And look, if uh, things go wrong and I'm totally wrong, at least you'll have some good cranberries around the house. All right. So enjoy Jackie Cation. She has a new album out called Staycation that is coming out on November 16th. And I'll remind you of it when we get closer. But uh, it's called Staycation, released on uh, YouTube through uh, 500 Pound Gorilla. Um, 
just great. I, I have so many comedian friends that are not stopping and waiting for contracts. They're just making stuff and putting it out there. And millions of people are turned on to great comedy. And Jackie is a great comedian. She came on live from here, the old Prairie Home Companion show. And uh, she was one of the best comics in the two years that we were doing that show. She's so damn funny. She's so smart. She also has a great podcast called The Dork Forest, which I was on. And uh, she's the best. And the the t-shirt the t for her podcast is, uh, everyone should be wearing it. <laughs> it's one of the only th merch things I've gotten from somebody where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm definitely wearing this. All right, enjoy Jackie Cation and um, we'll enjoy this candy and we'll talk more at the end. I am. Mm, they're good though. I don't enjoy a nerd. I Try like one a nerd. Snicker. Oh, pusher, nerd pusher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me that's not enjoyable. Okay, rolling. I'm okay. eating nerds right now. What you got? Well, you're, you're trying my nerd. I'm trying your nerds. I was savoring a, t a bite sized Snicker bar. <laughs> Did you give away these candies? These Did were the candies we gave away on Halloween. I didn't. Did anyone come? Yeah. A we didn't have any kids. Really? We usually get a hundred kids. They didn't come. They didn't come. Wow. wow. Eight kids. Eight kids. <coughs> what do you think? <coughs> was it a, um, was the neighborhood? Delta. Delta variant. <laughs> it's all Delta. I think that we're not, everybody's not over it. They're not, yeah. Mm -mm. Unless you travel. <clears throat> Unless you travel outside of California. Oh, you get out of California. It never happened. <laughs> it really hasn't. You're like, if they're I'm back. going to Lowell, Arkansas. Guess what? I was there in, um, would have been May 1st. Mm hmm. Of this year? Of this last year. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I, I was literally, I had just gotten my second shot, and it was two weeks after my second shot. Mm hmm. And I'm like, all right, I'll do the road. Uh -huh. That's why I went to Lowell, Arkansas, <laughs> where everyone was like, yeah, we're bored now. <laughs> and so they were stacked like cordwood. It was all good. And they were happy. And they were happy. I know. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, some of them lived, some of them died. Sure. They just, they kept moving. I've definitely put to... the vaccine to the test in the last month and a half. I went back on tour and stuff. And I was like, mm. the last one was in New Jersey at the Borgata Casino. Okay. Wonderful night and packed. And I was like, I'm selling my books after this show. Mm -hmm. And I stood out there with no mask mm -hmm. and I'm like, all right, vaccine, it's on you. Let's see, <clears throat> let's see how good you are. <laughs> are and we... uh, it was fine. Yeah, we're going. Oh, we're going. All right. And it was well, fine. <clears throat> it was fine. I um... Did this nerd hurt you? Yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> That nerd caused us uh, some, some, uh, and the weird thing is if it were a dork, are there dorks? Ooh, I don't Little know. Little boxes of dorks. I brought what? Halloween candy for you because we had a big, we have a big Halloween party mm -hmm. for like all of the families and stuff. And, uh, I bake a big chili. Mm -hmm. I couldn't bring you that leftover chili. That would have been weird. Right. And I made two breads. Yeah. And I know I've, I've given you the bread before yeah, yeah. and I, uh, Everyone someone at the bread. end yeah someone one of them that people just tore into it <laughs> <laughs> and then that is kind of gratifying it was kind of yeah. cool yeah. and then at the end there was a fight between two uh two guests over who was going to take home the other bread no one got it no one received it no one was offered it right they right were fighting just, over who was going to take executive decision was made <laughs> uh without your consent really and i was like i have uh, to just let her have it just let her have it she yeah. never had a before she'd heard about it i was like go ahead yeah take the bread it's, what's your uh, favorite candy in this bowl in that bowl it's got to be uh your snickers bar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. solid i like a recess of course not uh, that, but not this i that's what i was like you're giving this out what is it it's white chocolate oh which is just white an, chocolate an abomination. oh but look it but it's called ghost yeah it's yeah. a reese's ghost get it's it themed. <laughs> it's themed <laughs> yeah i don't mind a whopper i like yeah i like a whopper i like a kit kat Kit Kats are all right. You're not People really into them. the Kit Kats. No, not as much. I used to like, um, get this, what's in here? I saw it. What? It was the Three Musketeer. 
Mm. And my thing that cracks me up about the Three Musketeer is the is the marketing of a Three Musketeer is always like we put a lot of air in it to make it look bigger. That's their. <laughs> they're like it's the biggest candy bar on the market because we put a lot of air into it, big and fluffy. <laughs> and what I liked it until then, and I was like, yeah. You're, you're full of it. <laughs> I did doing? like them more when I was young and silly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was, <laughs> I was more part of it. Now I was telling you that Andy, Andy's a fan of the album Joy. Almond Joy. That's Almond a good. Joy. That's a good song. It's, it's a good one. Are you Which, just gonna sit there and eat candy? For is you, is you're probably now. I brought the candy for you, and I'm like, I haven't. No, no, eat, I didn't I, get I, to eat it yesterday. Oh, good. I I didn't have any candy because Andy also made a sweet potato pie. Ooh. I made chili. Um, you did. And lentil soup for um, them's that don't eat meat. And um, though I did tell Andy, I said, oh, I'm probably gonna come home with a really nice loaf of bread. And, oh uh, no! But that's uh, that's fine. I uh, I'm sick of chili. We, we, I know. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah. I I didn't want to eat it again tonight. I didn't want to eat. Soup and the bread would have made you eat the chili. Yeah, the bread and the and the and he made cornbread actually. He did. Mm-hmm. Is it good? It is good. He makes good cornbread. I uh, apologize. Now I feel terrible. I well, don't because there's a. A pile of sugar in front of me. It's going to soothe my tears. Well, I'll bring you bread. All right, before we before we uh, get into too much of the food talk and the <laughs> comedy talk, tell me about your new album. Oh, right. It was very exciting. It is very exciting because um, I was going to record it before the world went into lockdown. Mm-hmm. And then the world went into lockdown. And then I did um, Zoom shows. And then I came out of lockdown and I did 10 weeks on the road mm-hmm. from April 1st to middle of July, essentially. I, um, that's probably not 10 weeks, whatever it was. It's a bunch. Bunch of weeks. And then I recorded it at Acme, my home club in Minneapolis. Love it. And filmed it too. And, um, since nobody had asked if, uh, if I (laughs) wanted to do a special, yeah, I was like, well, just do it right. And worst case scenario, you chop it up into 60 one minute chunks and get a million TikTok followers or yeah, whatever, right? right? Yeah. And so that's um that's what I've done. And um So you shot it and it shot it. Still nobody I burned I burned a bridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not good. It turns out I'm good at uh three different parts of any parts of six of my jobs <laughs> at any given moment. Uh, it's it's a, it's my moving target. It is very much <laughs> a moving target. The one that I try to go on the straight and narrow on is always stand up. Right. I try to commit fully to that 112% every time. Yeah. Uh the rest of it gets the rest of my attention. <laughs> and sometimes when I email uh, a person in the industry for help, uh, I put it poorly. Oh, uh, no. I say it bad. <laughs> oh, no. And I get an email back saying, I know you don't know how insulting your email was, but uh, please lose my phone number. <laughs> what? Yeah, lose no. my contact. Yeah. Oh, no. Please <laughs> lose my contact. Yeah, it, it felt um, both accurate and a little excessive. Wow. I was like, fair enough. Let's uh, let's call it. Wow, that does. <laughs> I'm so, sorry to laugh, but it's. Oh no, it was meant oh, a it, baby Ruth. Okay. <laughs> but it, I don't see you doing that. I don't. It wasn't I don't that see offensive, you having, but it was yeah. definitely off. It was off. Right, right. Yeah, it was. Was it sent? Was it sent in rage and like you just? If you had paused <laughs> for a the, couple hours, it might have been okay. Or did, and you just felt like it was a. Was it a passion email? It was a little bit too late in the day. <laughs> it was too late in the day. I didn't curse or anything. I just. I, it was it was strategically not ideal. Yeah. Was, I mentioned a bunch of, but then I did I did get um I did talk to um. Other people that were viable who mm-hmm. were in sort of would have been interested in it if yeah. they didn't, you know, they, you know, they say they're fans and I believe them. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am always reminded of what Fred Armisen said to me once, uh-huh. maybe 20 years ago when he, yeah. when he first got SNL, uh-huh. um, it was right before that uh, we were talking about, you know, what you get sort of in, mm-hmm. in Hollywood. And he said, you know, you get what you get. You yeah. get what you get, and you have to, and you have to be grateful for that. Right. And what everybody else gets, you kind of want. 
<laughs> but you get what you get. That's really well put. It's so simple. <laughs> it, really <laughs> it really is. is. <laughs> it's really so simple. He's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That reminds me of when uh, when Letterman was interviewed on uh, in Rolling Stone, like mm-hmm. w- you know, pretty pretty well after. I think I don't I don't think he had retired yet. I don't think so. I think it was probably maybe even ten years before. So, but he was just talking you know, the whole thing, the Leno, the Letterman, the Leno, the Letterman, on and on and on, decades, stories, movies, all the thing, and he just goes, yeah. It turns out more people like him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's exactly it. It has nothing to do with what's right, what's wrong, who my side, your side. Yeah, numbers wise, more people like Jay. Jay Leno. Than than like me. Just as a, (laughs) if it were an abacus. (laughs) Right. (laughs) 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 Yeah, wow. Look, a lot of people like that guy. Mm, That, I I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, that's hilarious. It is funny when you see what other people have. There's yeah. that thing. I remember Nick DiPaolo said to me once, he was kind of aggravated that somebody, it was like the um, the upfronts in New York, you know, so they put all the ads everywhere and he's like complaining about some guy who had something. I said, then he's like, well, there's no justice that this guy has this show and we're sitting here. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but you know, it's like that I'm sure in every business, you know, it's like an insurance, <laughs> like somebody's getting a promotion this week that nobody else, that no one else can believe is getting the promotion. Mm-hmm. He goes, yeah, but in insurance, you don't have to see that guy's face on the side of a fucking bus. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong, and yet he is wrong. <laughs> sometimes you see a guy's face on the side of somebody's bus, and you're like, that guy. Yo, what's he doing? Sweet James. Yeah. What's happening? You ever see <laughs> All right, so James back to your, but anyway. back to your, back to your special. Oh, right. Uh, I should probably tell people about it, yeah. which is they should uh, listen to the album, mm-hmm. and they, and so what I ended up doing was I just. Um, we're just going to put it on YouTube on eight hundred pound gorillas YouTube, and um, so great. And because they have such set success up, with this, yeah, and they have it all set up where people do watch ads, mm-hmm. like my YouTube channel. I've set it up with ads, and I've set it up without ads. Yeah, and the with ads is irritating to me. It's irritating, but they let more people. They feed it to more people. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh. Do you ever notice when I took ads off, even mm-hmm. on this? podcast right and George all Morris of a sudden doesn't... all of a sudden the numbers were like low yeah i was like what happened to the numbers oh it's like oh because they're in the business of right selling advertising right so i suppose if i because jackie and Lori podcast and the dork forest are both on my youtube page page and they don't neither one of them do ads because i was just right. like it is a nicer gesture <laughs> right right and people i mean you can eventually skip the ads anyway but the um but so it's going to be on 800 pound gorilla what'd you call it yeah exactly why don't we fucking get to the <laughs> we're too chatty we, we go off into two november 16th you november guys. 16th that's right just two weeks from this very day that we're recording this god knows when it goes go up. on the youtube it's going up tomorrow we're it's going, going up tomorrow yeah going on the youtube going on the youtube it'll be everywhere spotify jackie cation it's called staycation staycation love huh? it love in it in the hopes that someone will pronounce my name correctly Directly forever. That's so. But I was great. introduced on stage last week. Jackie Cash has a new album out uh, on November sixteenth. Wait, she has a new album out November sixteenth. It's called Staycation. Please welcome Jackie Cashan. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what just, what just happened? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I got, I've gotten to a point where I was just filming something and, and, uh, I was like the center of it. Like it was a thing. And I was like almost like a day from wrapping up the whole thing. And I saw on the call sheet that I never saw, uh, Tom Pappas, P-A-P-P-A-S. Oh my gosh. And it's just like, you know what? There was a time when that would bother me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you know when that... I was in third grade <laughs> right? and you Until... couldn't pronounce or spell Papa. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought this road was going to be a lot easier. <laughs> and it was not. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I know. I yeah. thought, and I've always used the mnemonic for vacation. <laughs> And yeah. um, it still has not helped. I'm just like, it should be perfectly. It's like, oh, is that how it's spelled? Jackie Stop Kishan. talking to me. <laughs> is, that what the, is that the way they go most of the time when they mess it up? Um, Cashian. Cashian. Uh, Cashian. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
And, uh, and then I, and then people just go real, they, they go off the deep end sometimes. <laughs> go really but, weird. But it's so weird because you're just like, well, it's not that big of a deal. It's um, And I don't really, I mean, whenever I, t- I say to the MC, I'm like, whatever you say, I will go on stage. <laughs> right, exactly. I I'm mean, coming. <laughs> <laughs> Anything close to Jackie. You can't and I'm stop coming. me. Yeah, you can't stop me. I <laughs> had... Uh, Julie. <laughs> I had someone reach out to Eliza. Mm-hmm. Uh, Schlesinger. Okay. And on, and this was so. This was like, she's the she's the wrong person to do this to. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't think she. I don't think Eliza is over people messing with her name. And ah. she, and my assistant for the show <laughs> sent her what only could be explained as use every word in the alphabet and hope that. You make Schlesinger out of it. Oh my gosh. It, it went on for like two times, two and a half times the length of Schlesinger. And then the, all the number, it was just, I think there was even like a dollar sign in it. <laughs> was, How was that received? She was not happy. It was not. Um... I felt bad. Right. But it was so ridiculous that it, sh- it should have been like a oh. laugh. Right, right. Because you she, clearly this person has just spaced how to do it. I remember one of my first, um, uh, or not not a first one, but uh, I remember emceeing one time for the first time for Kostaki, uh-huh. Economopolis. Yep. And um, <laughs> by the end of it, you know how to say Kostaki Economopolis. Uh, but in the beginning, it's just a shit show. It's yeah. just, it's a, there's trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Kostaki Monakonopolis. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Something Greek. Just go really fast. When yeah. I do my, the, the serious show, the XM show. Yeah, yeah. And some of the names come through and you're just like, this one just has to be done really quickly because. <laughs> <laughs> right. If I say it, somebody said, if you spell the word socks really fast, uh-huh. it sounds like you're speaking Spanish. And if you say it in a Spanish accent, it's S-O-S-O-C-K-S. S-O-C-K-S. S-O. Because it's eso. 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 C-K-S. Yeah. Jackie Gage just quoted a TikTok she saw. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I just talked about myself in the third person. So oh my God. I like that's I good. I should be murdered. No, it's good. Okay. I never understood why that was such a such an offense. Well, I, it, it's I fun think once it in can a while. be once in a while. Though yeah. I did uh, one time a friend of mine went out with a guy, went on a date uh-huh. with a guy who had one of those... <laughs> handheld uh, recorders yeah and in the court it was their first date they had the online date right so they had talk 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 uh-huh. they're out they're just out for coffee and uh he would occasionally oh no unclip it and go <laughs> note to self and then remind himself of something no yeah. oh my god my friend amy goes the third time he does it like they're there for like an hour but the yeah. third time he does it she goes do you do you have to do that? What is that? <laughs> and uh, and he, he literally... What is that? He picks. He does it again. He goes, note to self, girl doesn't like, note to self. <laughs> uh, I think he had given up on the date, <laughs> is what I'm saying. That is really insane behavior. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the worst. Uh, that's worse than third person occasional. Oh. Now, you've been married for how long now? 15 years this yeah. year. Do you know what that is? That's real. Yeah, it is real. And then we were together for three years before that. So uh, I do a lot of jokes about how I'm not good at this, but let me tell you something. I'm clearly doing something You're pretty right. good at it. Mm-hmm. How long have you been you married? make a good chili. Um, I have been married for 21 years. 21 years. And then you dated for And we dated for weeks. like two before, okay, yeah, two or three before. And uh, yeah, it's uh, but when the reason I brought it up is when you are at the table next to the date, the, the first date, and... You know, they're not pulling out the thing, note to self, but you can tell this is, they're asking all the questions and there's nothing better than watching the struggle (laughs) of two people trying. From the other side? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's real nice. Isn't it? Yeah. It's like hearing a traffic report when you're home. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, uh, you're, you're rooting for them, but it's just like, you're also like, what's going to happen? Yeah. It's, uh, what are the odds? What are what the odds are going to make it? Is he ever going to let her talk? Is she ever going to let him talk? <laughs> yeah. What is happening? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. so infuriating. Are they holding forth? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I was, uh, it's good. In lockdown, Andy and I got new wedding rings. You did? Yeah. Just as, nice. a, as a fun, um, this is, it's, I believe it's platinum. Ooh, nice. And it's just got emeralds and copper 
sort of oh, it's uh, beautiful. Uh, and laid into it. Get this nice. though, it glows in the dark. What? Yeah, of course he, it does. <laughs> he, he got the ones that were painted uh, so that they glow in the dark. And so weird. you go to bed at night <laughs> and we're like, where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh, there you are. And uh, That's amazing. Right. And so, because our initial, this is uh, our initial uh, wedding rings uh, I picked mm-hmm. out of the Sky Mall. Uh, and remember the Sky Mall? Yeah, I remember and Sky Mall. What happened to it? Andy said, we're not getting married to sky mall rings we're gonna have we, I, I don't mind the design the design is lovely why oh, did you pick it because they were it was 2006 when we got married uh-huh. and so remember lord of the rings had <laughs> just come out yeah and they were elven like sort of fake elven rings and all so all they are and they're, oh, they're white great. gold yeah with uh with a leaf pattern around them <laughs> that was in the sky mall in green but the jeweler accidentally did black and out uh-huh. So whatever, and uh, uh-huh. and uh, but it's been um, yeah. But so I, we let you buy those, and then you no, I never, you I never got married with those. We, no, he, we had we had gold ones made. Okay, because the ones in the Sky Mall. Was oh, sold. I see, I see, I see. He was like, I, what, do we really want to get married to <laughs> Sky Mall rings? I'm like, kind of. <laughs> Have we met? <laughs> right, and. It was like when he asked me to move in with him, he said, I'm going to, I'm, I'm looking to buy a house mm. uh, and I would love to help you to help me pick it out. Right. Um, Cause I'd love you to move in with me. And we had only been dating for like six or seven months. Wow. And I was like, well, this, this is terrifying. <laughs> and um, I said, well, I'm thinking, what if I keep my, what, what if I, what if I keep my apartment and just sublet it? And he's like, like Paul Reiser, like, <laughs> like, like Kramer's apartment on yeah. Seinfeld. And I was like, just in oh. case. He's like, yeah, I, I don't think, uh, he said, you could do it, you, you know, but yeah. it doesn't feel like there's a lot of commitment there. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> just going back to the other apartment. But I just, I, I'm Were you sad. scared? Were you really scared? Oh, tr- yeah. Terrified. Really? Yeah. And I should have kept it and subletted it to a thousand comics because it was four fifty a month with off street parking. Oh my god! One bedroom. Yeah. In ben- Valley Valley Village. Yeah, you should have. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> and uh, just financially. Yeah. And um. So but, had you lived with someone before? You hadn't, right? Mm-mm, I had never dated. Uh, I had done. That's not true. I dated a guy in high school, right uh-huh. when I first started doing stand up. Right. And um, I had a boyfriend for a little bit less than a year, but uh-huh. uh. I was a mess, and I was. I apologized to that guy more than once, <laughs> to the point where he's like, "No, it feels rude." Anyway, <laughs> like I made some sort of error. Anyway, but um, the uh, uh, but I never had any relationships from from like 1986 uh-huh. until uh, nine, uh, 2003 wow. when we met. Wow. Yeah. Why? Uh, emotionally, just I I wanted to. You know the 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 on the on paper it was because mm-hmm. I want to do stint, right? You know, I was yeah. like, focus. you know, focus. I'm not gonna. I don't want kids, but right. I, I have five siblings. Right? Uh, there's plenty. The jackass gene runs true. It's all working out. <laughs> right? There's no need for me to <laughs> pass this. We're on. good. It's they, they all half sound like this anyway. <laughs> right? And so <laughs> a little clone factory. Right. Like, unnecessary <laughs> yeah and so i never i never and i never met anybody that um i you know i had crushes on guys mm-hmm. but it was like i i didn't i didn't want a boyfriend or a thing like that but i saw yeah. other people with boyfriends and i'd be like that is interesting right and then when i was about <laughs> 1999 i was i i was like you know what i would like a boyfriend mm-hmm. i would like a whole life yeah instead right instead of because i had just focused on, on yeah 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 and showbiz or whatever. Yeah. And um, and I was like, you know what? I would, I would like a boyfriend, and we don't have to be married. It doesn't have to be yeah. anything. But I like the idea of monogamy. Right. Uh, it's just <laughs> sort of you know one person to sort of hang out with and and see if I can do it to some extent. Right. So I did online dating. Right. And it took three years, and every oh, three wow. months I would just back away slowly from the computer, uh-huh. shaking, <laughs> <laughs> regroup emotionally, <laughs> and then go back in. Because because you would go out with people, and then I would go out with I yeah I there was I probably. In those three years, yeah, uh, in the off and on three years, mm-hmm. I probably had twenty four guys that I, and and like two of them were 
I dated twice. Right. And all but the rest were one dates? All the rest of them were just sort of meet and greet. Right. Would I make out with that? Would he make out with his? <laughs> yeah. Go forward from that place. Wow. Like and speed dating and slow-mo. A little bit, but in slow-mo. <laughs> yeah. And, cause, but luckily it was before, and I think it's lucky. It was lucky for me anyway. Like, I don't yeah. know. Like, because I don't know that if there are apps now that are dating apps or if they're just hookup apps. I think they're still there. Yeah. I think for, just from talking to people but in the audience. But they're also themed. Yes. And yes. this wasn't themed. This was just through the LA Weekly. Oh, oh I th- thought it was Farmers.com. It was not. It was <laughs> It was essentially comics dating comics. No, it was, oh, it was horrible... just kind of an open thing. It yeah, wasn't well, like... Yeah, well, I... There was a... There were, next to the Onion uh-huh. online... Yeah. <laughs> there was a, a an alley that had ads. Uh-huh. And, and, and one of them was... Uh, a dating app uh-huh. and I thought that it was an onion dating app oh, so kidding. I was like well at least they read the onion <laughs> right they know what funny is and so <laughs> I did it and I filled it out All right and it was free you're right and um it was part of an umbrella thing right with at the LA Weekly and you could you know because you yeah. could set how far people go and weirdly enough Andy uh, who is my husband uh he lived like two and a half miles from me Wow, we we have at least three two two people in common that really? we could have met. Wow, yeah, and That's it was interesting. It was super. Is that crazy? The, it was super crazy. Yeah, in the old days, you'd been at the canteen, and your friends would have. Yeah, well, uh, Tamara Boyd you. would have already introduced us <laughs> right. for my last day job. <laughs> right, she was a close captioner at my last day job. <laughs> oh, really? And they went to college together. They're close friends, <laughs> and so they were at a party. I, I was know. in New York. Yeah. Filming my 2003 stand-up uh, comedy central special. Oh yeah. Anyway, so uh, but I was in New York doing that, yeah. and they were at a party together. At her, she she was having a party. I was going to go to it, and uh, they were ta- and they were talking, and she said, "Are you dating anyone?" I said, "Well, I met this really no. nice woman that uh, she does stand up. She's in New York right now." <laughs> and Tamara goes, "I work with a woman who's a does stand up who." <laughs> Was in, in New York, New York right, right now. now. And they were like, holy smokes. And the next time I saw Tamara Boyd, Tamara Boyd said to me, you know, I'm really good friends with Andy. Oh. And then she stared deeply into my eyes and she's like, be good to Andy. Oh. And I was like, oh. Protect well, Andy. This is like a caricature wow. of, of how humans talk to each other. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> but kind of a reassuring for yeah. you too. And he also went to college with uh, Hardwick. Oh. One of his buddies did stand up, and he saw um, Chris and Randy do stand up together. Right, right, so, right. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's so great. And now, fifteen years later, and here we are. Jeez. Just, and lockdown was good. Lockdown was. Did you? Did you guys? Yeah. We kind of thrived it was great. a little bit. Yeah, which I, was uh, it's sad. You know, hundred percent. I know. We all have to say like, and we a million. Uh, there were a lot of dead. people suffering. Yeah. I know, and it's true. But it also, I'm going to go for the. I think I just saw it. The Three Musketeers. I'm going to go for the Whoppers. <laughs> and, uh, ooh, look at that. You slay. You, <laughs> Do you know why? Because it's Halloween. Oh, I thought it was because I was a comedian. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> um, yeah, it, but there was definitely, you know, it's, it's kind of remarkable is that we did thrive in a lot of ways because I got to unplug from the road. I got yeah. to be with the family. I was For home the like first time in... Forever. Ever. Forever. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, oh, why is this holiday season so much fun? Oh, because I'm here. Right. With your family. With my family. Surrounded by your children and your wife. <laughs> yeah. And your, yeah. In your home. And, not not yeah. like I'm going to squeeze two more corporate dates in a club and I'll be home by Christmas Eve, right, I promise. Right, right. And it turned out you still paid the bills. Yeah, it all worked yeah, out. Yeah, it all worked out. It worked out just fine. It was, it was I had never good. been home that. But you know what's interesting, and I find this talking to audiences when I'm out there on tour right now, is that I'll tell people, which I've been doing since I started doing shows again, I'll take a beat and say, I'm proud of all of you that we're here, like looking for laughs. I don't know what you do, but or what you did over the last 18 months, but you obviously did it. Mm-hmm. And you got through what was a really scary, uncertain time. And humans are so resilient. Mm-hmm. They just don't even want to. They're like, yeah, that's all right. We, we did that. We're, we're here now. 
earlier when I would say it, people would really like, thank you. Thank yeah. you for saying it. Now people are like, it's like when you see someone go through a tragedy or something and you're like, wow, how'd you, how do they get through that? Mm -hmm. And they're like, I just did it. You know, they don't, uh -huh. humans don't wallow Once in the it. distance. Yeah. yeah. Like and, in the moment, you need the pep talk. Right. Yeah. But then once it passes, you're like, okay, we don't have to relive that. We don't have to go back. And it was, we forget what, like what that March, April was. Yeah. When we first got shut in and you couldn't like. There were no walk, airplanes. No airplanes, no cities, no bring no your traffic. food in and not and being worried. Like, is it on the food? Yeah. I mean, it was. Wiping a, everything it down. Was, it was insane. Yeah. But we've kind of forgotten about that. Well, you know, I just uh, finished uh, the second nonfiction book I've read in five years. Mm. That's right. Uh, Eric Larson, uh, Splendid and Vile. Mm -hmm. it's, a, uh, it's a biography of uh, Churchill. But the perspective is from the the diaries of the people around him. Mm. So it's much lighter. Uh -huh. It's incredibly easy read. Right. Which I need with my nonfiction. Yeah, um, I'm with you. It's I, If it gets dense, mm -hmm. I am not a dum-dum, but I'm just, I'm bored. You're I just, bored. You're yeah. like, all right, I get this part. Let's get I to wish, the, yeah. I wish you, I, I, I wish you could put air in this guy, Eric <laughs> Like a Larson, Three Musketeers, like three... which by the way, was pretty damn good. <laughs> These whoppers are quite excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, yeah, Eric Larson is the Three Musketeer of, mm -hmm. of, of writing biographies and, and nonfiction. Right. I, I'm looking forward to reading his, uh, one of the old ones that isn't about murder. Right. Anyway, but the, <laughs> yeah, the pep talk, women. yeah, the, the pep talk that, uh, the Churchill, you know, uh, cr created. Right. right. And he was just like, you know, we can't, I'm, I'm not trying to sugarcoat this for you, mm -hmm. but we're going to get through it mm -hmm. and we're going to do it because we have to. Right. Right. And it was just this, you know, he's like, we're not going to give up. Right. You don't want to give up to Hitler. Right. That's insane. Right. And, um, and so Amazing. I thought it was so great. It's it was so such, great. It gave me a pep talk. I pulled Churchill out. I have this big, like dictionary sized book of just his quotes. And it's all, it's all. He was chatty. He was really chatty. <laughs> and, um, and by subject, you know, like, it's like, you know, the the economy or you know whatever family life oh, whatever. Wow. and it's i'm literally dictionary size and i brought that out in the middle of the, the beginning of the the scary part of the pandemic mm -hmm. and it was comforting it was yeah. it was like because the, it was resilient right 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 he was um he uh, one of his quotes is something like you know i didn't give anybody courage i help people find their courage wow and you're just like dude yeah that is a gift. Yeah. You, you've given a gift to millions of people. Yeah. Yeah. But that, there is something to that because people are r remarkable. They people really are. They really are. They, they, they rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. they, they do all kinds of things. Yeah. And you're right. When it's, when it's even like 12 minutes over, they're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah. weirdly enough, 40 years later, the nostalgic. Mm -hmm. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, right? exactly. Now yeah. we're all like nine eleven. Do you remember it? Right, and, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> wistfully. I know, but my, like my grandmother, I always bring her up as an example. Went through, you know, tail end of the first war, the depression, second world war, and you know all this stuff. And when I saw her on nine eleven, like I went to her house because I couldn't get back into New York. I was traveling, and I went to her house. And she was so excited to see me. And I was like, Nana, didn't you see the news? Like what? I was like all teary eyed just seeing her. And she's like, oh yeah, that, that stuff happens. Come on in, you want a tuna sandwich? Wow. <laughs> but she had seen, she knew we were gonna, she knew what we didn't know. Right. Was she's that like, we were gonna get through it. Right, is that, is that it, it changes the world, but it also doesn't. Right. You know. Yeah. And that's and that's so important to to remember. Mm -hmm. The you know my I on my last album, I am not the hero of this story, <laughs> uh, is available everywhere. But the uh, I tell this story that I couldn't. I didn't. I was so psyched to record it when I did it. Mm -hmm. I, I recorded it like six weeks after the election in 2016, and um, and there was a lot of fear then. Right. Of what was what insane like the insane things that did happen mm -hmm. were insane enough but right. we all thought that it was going to be like finger on the button and 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 mm -hmm. just 
end time stuff because everyone is always like oh it's going to be the end time," which yeah. i find to be by the way the most narcissistic attitude yeah how will you be able to go on without me so <laughs> right. it must end in my lifetime right. the world must end when i'm here yeah yes. exactly and you're like it's actually not happening do you ever read the road by cormac mccarthy no Will I? No, I will I not. Know. I know. Yeah. I was in that camp of, I. No, why would I? Well, did you accidentally read it? I have accidentally well, read some amazingly <laughs> written literature. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. what? what uh, the Handmaid's Tale. Right. Yeah. I was like, what am I, what am I doing? <laughs> this is not, don't read this. <laughs> I know. And I'm it like, really does a prayer for Owen Meany. Yeah. Uh, I read that. I was like, nope. What are you doing? It does change you. I'm in yeah. the middle of it right now. This oh. was I. I was reading Cormac McCarthy at a friend's suggestion, and I was like, "I'll read everything but the road, I guess." Okay. The Orchard Keeper, and there was another one, and he's really, I mean, a great writer. Like, yeah, this is, okay, this guy's great. Mm -hmm. And I was really naive. I didn't, I, I, ignorant. I didn't know who he was, and. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the road. I was on, I was on the road. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for a book. And I'm like, I'm just going to pick it up and start reading it. All right. And it is so spooky mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. the apocalypse has happened. Sure. And he's a father and a son are wandering down the road mm -hmm. of what I think is a nuclear holocaust because there's, there's no sun. Mm -hmm. And they're just getting by day to day. It's so atmospheric. It's so, and what's really crazy, and this is why you shouldn't read it, is that after watching No Cities okay. and Scared of the Groceries and okay. No Planes, yeah. you are like, yeah, so when is this going to happen? Right, right. Like, we've been through a couple movies, mm -hmm. like people with hazmat suits coming up and testing you in your car. Sure. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, this part could happen too. Right, right. And it's so scary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the good thing is, if you think about, like, sort of Carlin, and I believe Dennis Miller had had a something comparable back in the day, mm -hmm. jokes about how um, the earth is fine. Right, he'll shrug us off. Yeah, the earth will live. Yeah. And it's just, and do you, I would say the book that most compares to how we live right now, mm -hmm. Watership Down. Uh-huh. The first... 80 pages, probably. Yeah. Where the Warren is too crowded. Right. And everybody's waiting. Everybody's waiting. Everybody's like, we have got to start a new Warren. We have to get people to get out and, and do this. And everyone's like, no, nah, I don't want to. Yeah, no. What, what, yeah, we should probably. Yeah, I don't want. All right. <laughs> right. And, I mean, it's just yeah. that. That yeah. seems. That's the. the and the that scene. Mm -hmm. and, and I never saw the movie. I understand that the adaptation was great. Uh -huh. But uh, the kid's adaptation. Yeah. But dark. Yeah. And, animated, um, right? Uh, I think animated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, there's that scene. And then there's an, a later scene where they're on the road. Right. And yeah. they come up on. The name of the chapter I distinctly remember is called The Shining Wire. Uh -huh. And they come upon the fattest, happiest bunnies in the world, uh -huh. Watership Down bunnies, on their journey to a new warren. They're like, we have a huge warren. You could join us. Look how happy and fat we are. Uh -huh. and, uh, and they're like, why are you so happy and fat? And they're like, the farmer just has like a whole thing of lettuce that he just he just throws away old lettuce <laughs> in this thing and we just eat off of that and it's amazing <laughs> and um and then one night there it's after dinner mm -hmm. in the warren and there's poetry there's nihilistic beautifully written <laughs> amazingly constructed bunny poetry <laughs> right. and then the next day one of the bunnies is out and they find that one of the uh one uh someone's been caught in a snare mm -hmm. and they're like oh we got to get help and they're like oh no no that's the price the rabbit calls the 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 farmer uh, calls the uh the warrant uh, for his own needs right and uh they're like yeah, we're not going to stay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that's what I think of whenever I think the, uh, 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 whenever I see incredibly well-written, super dark stuff. Yeah. Because right. much like incredible, like really well-written, cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think humans have that kind of imagination. Mm -hmm. I think we're actually, this gets a little hippy skippy, okay. but we're actually sort of seeing something mm -hmm. through 
like into the future or into a parallel universe. When we're or, when someone's writing that. Yeah, like like J.R.R. Tolkien. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he took everything from the from all the fiction of the past and right. all the stories of the past, but then he created it and created a world that was the world building was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, even you it know, didn't exist. It didn't exist as and, as that. Right. And you're thinking that he, you're saying that he in some way. Was channeling, was channeling some something some archetype something that's yeah that was the, 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 there's a using there, him to tell this story right and, and there is a mindset that can maybe see mm-hmm. from a different perspective a different angle yeah like like you know Cormac McCarthy yeah it feels like he's flying above humanity yes and can kind of see into the future a little bit yes and that's where you're just like Tolstoy's like that too right where it's just. He's just, you think you're just going along about a little story about a husband and a wife. And Mm -hmm. then he shoots off into space and looks down and shows you the smallest things and the grandest things all within four pages. Right. And you're just like, all right, I have to, I have to lay down for a while. Right. Well, that's... <laughs> he just showed me way more than I see normally. Right. It's uh, like, like, right. Cause my mind isn't that big. No, right? no. And, and, and I think some writers have that, but they don't, don't necessarily, and some artists of all, of all kinds, right. Yeah. Yeah. Have that. And it's not every time. Like they say that no. to, to be considered a genius, you only have to do one really one genius thing. One great piece of work. Yeah. 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 So. And what's the name of your album? The Staycation. The Staycation. Yeah. Look so forward this to is, it. Is this the one? This is it. I, <laughs> I had a fan tell me that he listened to my albums when Hero came out. Yeah. He's like, I'm listening to your albums backwards to hear you get worse at stand up. <laughs> and I was like, flattering and yet not. Yeah. Unnecessary, sir. <laughs> that is a weird compliment. Yeah. The, 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 it's just, It's one of those books, and I'm like three quarters of the way through now, and it's one of those where when you put the book down, you're not done reading, right? Like You're just... It's just with you in the car. It's with you. It's just like it's haunting is Mm -hmm. the word. Haunting. I have to say that this splendid and vile Eric Larson thing, the Churchill thing, um, what Eric Larson does is he makes you feel like you're good at reading nonfiction. Uh-huh. Like I'm looking around, going, yeah. What else? <laughs> <laughs> what else? <can> I... <laughs> what are the parts of this can I crack? <laughs> uh, so I have opened. A, I, I have. I have a nonfiction book that I bought. The last nonfiction book I read was great, and it was about the history of knowledge. It was history of how knowledge has been collected. Uh-huh. Like initially, it was you know the 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 one dude who was the keeper Tell of the stories knowledge. Yeah, the Plato's, and, and then it was the and then it was the Library of Alexandria. Then it was the Internet. You know, I mean right. and everything in between. Wow, the monks and the priests and the whatever. Yeah, and so it was a great book. Yeah, and um, but I bought that and a book on the history. This was an amazing bookstore. <laughs> if there is a bookstore in the world that has a display out that can make me buy two nonfiction books, <laughs> yeah, good on you're, you. You <laughs> really got some amazing. Uh, Did they put like castles behind it or anything? I don't understand. Flat. It wasn't anything. It was there. Was there a bit of honey sitting on top of it? What the hell? And so it was. Um, th- so this other nonfiction book that I couldn't face mm-hmm. is uh, the history of Islam. Uh, Christianity and Judaism. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it looks yeah. amazing. It looks. Yeah, uh, let's let someone make that into a documentary. <laughs> yeah, I really would really like to watch that show. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I know there's another one that was really popular about. Uh, a, it was like, oh man, it was similar. It was like it it, it had the early religion and tied to like s- s- the salt trade and the. Oh, the sp- uh, the, uh, the spice road. And yeah, the- <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wow, that looks really... Uh, and I just fell asleep. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> right, in that sentence, you were like, oh, is there a way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. It's, uh... uh-uh. Have you ever um, written long form? Have you ever written longer than your stand-ups? Well... Um, you have and you don't want to t- say it out loud? I don't loud. want to say No, I wrote, um, I took a, I, I, I wrote fiction in college. Uh-huh. I took a, a, a short story class and it was my, my teacher was a famous short story author. Oh yeah. Uh, University of Wisconsin, Madison and, um, Lori Moore. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I did not appreciate her. <laughs> uh, I liked her as a teacher. She was a great teacher, yeah. actually. But I don't, I don't read short stories. Mm-hmm. And that's actually, I, that's on me, right? I mean, the only, right. and, um, but. <laughs> the funny thing about reading short stories, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but the funniest thing, I was just thinking, yeah, I don't either. And then when I have, then I get mad if it's not short enough. <laughs> <laughs> like you'll be reading like two, three, four page stories and then all of a sudden, 50 pages? What are you doing? You've conned me. <laughs> is this a New Yorker? What just happened? Yeah. And uh, So what, you didn't appreciate her talent or you just didn't No, I wish I had, I didn't... wish I had known that she was the Lori. You know, right. Like when, when right. you, when, when you get taught by, but uh-huh. I did, she was an excellent teacher. And, um, I, I would like to have written a novel. <laughs> right. I, you get it. Yeah. And, um, and I, 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 I once, audible asked me and maybe because this can be done this could be done and 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 i and i'd like to still do it Mm -hmm. i made it twice as hard as it needed to be but um audible asked me to write essentially a funny romance novel Mm -hmm. so a romance novel from a place of someone who likes romance novels yeah but is also super funny right that's a great idea it's a great idea and what it is is it would be like saying Please write Galaxy Quest uh-huh. about romance novels. Right. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's right. what I want to do. And I made it harder. I turned it into a historical romance novel. Uh-huh. I have a hard time writing sex scenes. Uh, I have, <laughs> so, I mean, and the... Uh, oh, um, yeah, I have to write the sex scenes. Yeah, yeah, the sex scenes. You know who'd be really good at it, though, is there's a, a Tiffany Stevenson, mm-hmm. who's a British comic, uh-huh. uh, who does a, a, a series on Instagram or TikTok or some damn thing. Uh-huh. But she's a great comic, and uh, but if you wanted to see it, uh, she writes, she does these <laughs> writing... W- women wait right uh how men write women when they're introduced into a scene Uh (laughs) uh-huh she writes men as if she were a man writing a woman walking into a scene and oh what is that like uh a lot of bouncing testicles a lot of you can see a shoulder blade you know a lot of a lot of bs and it's so silly and funny it's so funny she might actually be the one to write those sex scenes for me yeah have the ghost sex scene writer yeah yeah exactly a little collaborative moment right that's hilarious so what happened you got bogged down and no i wrote this i i got bogged down in it being a historical romance right and then and then i had an idea which became bridgerton right which well bridgerton weirdly enough i've read those books and so when we were in deep lockdown yeah. and Bridgerton came out I was like Julia Quinn the <laughs> Julia Quinn series uh-huh. and then I looked at it I was like I think Shonda uh, Shonda Rhimes yeah uh, yeah uh, stuck the landing on getting exactly that sort of right how incredibly insane they are right <laughs> and did yeah. you end up seeing it parts of it not really well there were there were things that she did that were kind of genius yeah right in the um when they're dancing uh-huh they're dancing to modern to music modern music yeah that has been uh, arranged for orchestra right and um <laughs> and the uh and that and that and i think there's going to be a second season and yeah. i was like about anthony He's, he's terrified of bees. Because <laughs> Julia Quinn is almost, you know, we do stand up. Yeah. So my, my, what I, what I can say safely is funny uh-huh. is, um, is hard to bring over two romance novels. Right. Right. So Julia Quinn uh-huh. is, is kind of the, is it does, does a, a, a very funny She's almost the funniest. Right, I got gotcha. you. In historical romance novels. Gotcha, gotcha. But, uh, right. <laughs> by regular standards, yeah. it's just goofy. Right, right, and right. And that's fine. Yeah. Oh, so, but in the hands of someone that could do really funny. It might be amazing. And might so I was amazing. trying to think of uh, like a modern, um, a modern sort of more Harlequin romancy kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I. What's his name with the long hair? R- right, but this would be Elon Musk. Uh, and J.K. Rowling, for some reason, are on an island <laughs> retreat. Um, 
uh, <laughs> off of Vietnam. And they fall in love and they both become better people. <laughs> They're not the worst people, but they could be doing more. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, JK's been in a, in a world of uh, controversy, but also she, it feels like she's on the outside of it. It feels like people are... Well, she doubled down on some really weird... I mean, I think she must have had... You know how everybody's kids mm-hmm. now yeah. are like, I know I'm going to be forced to be an adult, mm-hmm. but am I going to be forced to be a female adult mm-hmm. or a male adult? Because right. I can't stand it. Can right. I, can I, do, do I still get to be me? Remember when you were, you were uh-huh. kids? Yeah. You were just like, well, do I still get to be me? Right. Well, no. Well, you're going to be a woman. Right. And you're like, you're a man is now. Me, is me a woman? Right. Is me a man? Right, right, right. And so I think there's this whole generation that have been figured out and they're just like, no, I can continue to just be a they, them, and a me. Right, and, right, right. Uh, and you're like, okay. Yeah. But you do have to be an adult and right. get a job. <laughs> right, you're going to have to do stuff. Right, you're still going to have to do stuff, and you're still going to... What yeah. you are is is a thing, but what you do is actually the thing. Right, right. And and right. you can wear whatever you want. Right. <laughs> but nobody cares anymore. Yeah. It's a... I'm not well-versed in what JK said. Oh, she had a just but... problem with trans women. Yeah, she doesn't like. Nobody has any problem with trans men. She doesn't like that. She doesn't like the people taking the credit for being a woman without going through what <laughs> women went through. Right. It, though puberty's no 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 cakewalk for any of us. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's. Uh, it is harder being a woman, though. I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, it's. I think it's like harder to get work. Like, well, it's, it's harder to get work. <laughs> yeah, there's a social part of it, and there's just the physical part of it. There's like, like it's um, you know, once a month having to deal with your the flu is uh, kind of like <laughs> a horrible thing <laughs> for, for well, your entire life. Yeah, but I mean, much like what we were just talking about with nine eleven. Yeah, you stop thinking about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're just like, oh, well, this yeah. is this is the day that thing happens, and I guess I have to buy new underwear. Yeah, get over and, it. And uh, and all right, let's well, have a tuna sandwich. <laughs> right. I mean, you know the the funny. the real injustices about being a woman and being all that stuff. Yeah, is how you're perceived and that's mm-hmm. what these kids are that's what that's what these right people are trying to do they're just like i'm doing a new bit is it on the new album it is yes staycation it's staycation it's uh uh and and the the premise yeah. is that we are of course all stalks of meat uh-huh. with a brain on top <laughs> yeah <laughs> but we only meet the sausage casing <laughs> and we meet the sausage casing and we go, I would never sleep with that sausage casing. I will only sleep with that sausage casing. I hate that kind of sausage. Uh-huh. And please do not use the sausage analogy for capitalism. <laughs> uh, so, but the, the, the thing is, is it's so like, like if we could all meet each other as the stalker meet with a braid on top, mm-hmm. all anybody really wants mm-hmm. is a cup of coffee, a job, <laughs> right. a place to live, yeah. and for absolutely everyone to get out of the way. Right. Uh, I'm on the road, <laughs> please get out of my way. I'm on the street, please move. Uh, please get out of the way. <laughs> it's really true. Let me board the plane. <laughs> Let me board the plane. Let me get off the plane. Let me have a short line for Starbucks. <laughs> I just need a cup of coffee. I literally... And and it's like yeah. it, it's a way of, of thinking about people that could cure or take another step mm-hmm. to dealing with racism and sexism. Right, right, and, right. Because civilization moves so slowly. So slowly. It is It is like the tectonic plagues. Well, yeah, back to the Tolstoy thing of it all. You read these, these works from people, you know, from a long time ago, and you realize we have not changed. Like, the world has changed dramatically. But just like our emotions and our mental mental abilities, it's right. like crawling, like yeah. inch by inch. <laughs> right. We are <laughs> really? literally just grabbing the next thing, <laughs> the next ring, and yeah. we're just like, seriously, I can see. <laughs> yeah. Why are we still here? <laughs> right. And uh, you're like, well. Yeah, it really is remarkable. It's too bad, but it is, I think. I mean the the to but to to speak to the hope of it mm-hmm. in our in our lifetime it's changed so much. Yes. And it has I think obviously you know they they talked about pardon me. Uh they talked about the greatest um 
invention of the 20th century, and they insist that it is the television. Not the unicycle? Uh, not the unicycle. Ooh, mm. was that invented in the 20th century? I don't know, I probably wanted, earlier. I, I feel like they did it around Shakespeare uh, plays. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the bicycle was invented in the late 1800s. Yeah. So, but uh, it could have been. But, the, uh, but you know, like, because... Uh, most television. Yeah, the way perception can be manipulated. Yeah. Both for good and evil. Mm -hmm. And feel free to use it for good. Allow me to state the obvious. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. But, Please. <laughs> yeah. But like, if you look at Will and Grace, uh -huh. uh, Will and Grace is, uh, you look back on those and you're like, well, that's kind of dumb and that's kind of gross mm -hmm. and that's kind of dumb. Yeah. And that slightly offensive. <laughs> but at the time, it was making the rest, the world who didn't who might know three gay people in right, their lives right go oh he's just as neurotic and goofy as i am right and they're just people and they just like each other and who cares yeah and it 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 it, it opened a it opened a little stream yeah. a little road yeah it taught and and that's why when people look back at like you look back at your first albums yeah how's that how's that work it out you got anything back there that you go oh good lord no, I mean, just not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> just hacky. Lori like, Kilmartin <laughs> just put a, put a uh, she put a message before one of her tracks uh -huh. on Pandora. She's yeah. like, hey, this is Lori Kilmartin. Um, I don't, I don't know that I'd recommend this one. <laughs> Thanks for listening to it, but uh, I wouldn't do this joke now. Really? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We're just like, well. Yeah. It wasn't my, you know. It wasn't my best moment. But everybody was. But, but it was, right. You were of a time and. Right. And, and the person who actually is curating this thing is saying, yeah, that one doesn't really hold up. Yeah. There was a thing. In, <laughs> do you watch uh, <laughs> We're in the Shadows? What We Do in the Shadows? I've seen some of it. It's, yeah. it's really pretty funny. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and he was talking about his old music career. He's a vampire. So he's yeah. made things centuries ago. <laughs> and he's <laughs> like, I don't think that one held up very well. <laughs> Have you seen the HBO Max, the, the British version of Ghosts? Not the not the U.S. version, which just yeah. came out. No, no, I haven't. Um, it's adorable. Oh, and yeah. hilarious. It's a, it, an improv troupe sold a sitcom. Wow. So they, it's just a couple, uh, inherits like a mansion in the British countryside. Mm -hmm. And there's ghosts there from Neanderthal days. <laughs> Right. So there's like five different ghosts. There's like an MP from the 80s without his pants on. There's a Boy Scout, uh, you know, guy with an arrow in his, <laughs> his neck, neck and like a scout leader. And, uh, you know, the lady of the house. It's and, funny. Uh, yeah. A Regency it's really it. funny. <laughs> and it is like the first two episodes. You're like, no, I, I get it. I get it. Third episode. I'm like, all of them. Keep making them forever. Right. I, need, I need to see all of these. because yeah. They're adorable. Yeah. No, yeah. it's great. They're yeah <laughs> i think uh i think yeah i mean you know just the clothes you wore in this in your, the stuff you recorded before just like like how about just like what was everybody thought was funny at the time like i remember i remember being at like a just open mic and sitting at stand up new york and people were just starting to talk about masturbating on stage like it wasn't really a thing no do you know who? Do you know who made it okay? But tell your story. No, go ahead. Bill Hicks. Yeah, right. He was yeah, the it was first around one that, that was. It was, and it was the first time that it was. It was because it was in the zeitgeist, right? But he 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 got to do it on TV or something. Right. Yeah. He was probably on. Yeah, and and then all of a sudden everyone was doing these then masturbation it was everywhere. jokes everywhere. It was freaking everywhere. It was masturbation was everywhere. <laughs> You're like, stop yeah. it. And uh, yeah, it's weird how it kind of catches, and then. You know, of course, 30 years later, you're like, who cares? Like, what right, are you right. doing? Yeah, yeah. And the same thing happened. Like, rape jokes became like this thing. It became like the fashion. Like, all these yep. guys were doing these rape jokes. And there's just like, people are always looking for the, what's the taboo? And yeah. can I, and can we get there first and do it? And Right now, there's a lot of young women talking about their menstrual cycles. And mm. some of it's very, very funny. And some of it is not. Right. <laughs> but I was told that we couldn't talk about it. Right. That nobody wanted no one to, wants hear to hear it. it. Nobody right. wants to hear about oh, she's, it. She's, oh, oh what, she's just going to talk about her period you, for She's going to talk about her period for, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but the thing is, is uh, you can. Yeah. You can, talk, you can talk about your poop. <laughs> right. Uh, it doesn't, about, as long as you make it, you the, know. The problem is. Uh, there seems to be in right now, like there seems to be, of you know, and then people start Copy making cat. their way through copycat, and they're like, 
they think that maybe Ironic they think racism. that maybe they think that maybe Sarah Silverman only talks about you know the naughty things and right. they don't see the genius that's Sarah Silverman's perfect example cuz I think it was in 98 or 99 both her and Zach Galifianakis had ironic racism jokes uh-huh. and it caught on in the alt comedy community and then mainstream right. and then everyone was like I'm being ironic and you're like and yet yeah. you're not doing it with the finesse with the style with the with right. Zach Galifianakis <laughs> right nailed it yeah exactly Sarah Silverman thought about it right. and nailed it you very know, these... small targets and you have to be very good shots as they are yeah to pull that yeah. off you Super. miss by a, an inch it's a whole different s- scenario it's just hard yeah and uh comedy is not easy no. and uh but it also i mean it's worth it's worth the effort to to try to do like i have the this gender sexuality bit that i'm working on yeah that is that not it's it's on the album I'm still working on it. Come and see what new uh-huh. amazing tags I write now that it's been recorded. Yeah, I know. That's right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to be really amazing. <laughs> but it took me, like when I first started doing it, Yeah. Uh, I would have younger comics, and uh-huh. then uh, a couple of younger comics would came up and were like, well, you're a little off on mm-hmm. the definition of what they're right, talking right, about with right. gender. And you're a little off with uh, the difference between gender and sexuality. And you're a little off with this. And it was sort of a repetition. It was, I think it was Lydia Popovich, uh, Amy Miller, and um, Virginia Jones mm-hmm. are the three that come to mind. But I'm sure that there were others, you yeah. know, and they're all women of their age, you know, late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. And Brandy Posey. But the uh, these people... And they would come up and they were like, explain to me Mm -hmm. the errors. And so I would have to re, because it's worth, it was, it took three years to write that bit. Yeah. Because, and it's still growing, um, growing because it's such a huge. Well, that's the trick is it, is that it is very like something like that is very complicated and obviously a minefield, but it's also so much a part of the discussion. If my parents are talking about they and them and, and my college age daughter is like, it's, it's, it's It's so it's out there. It's such a big part of the thing. Mm -hmm. So for comedians not to weigh in on, it would be really weird. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) It would be really weird. And no one, and my mother's noticeable. And my, I guarantee you when my mom's trying to figure it out, she's not going to get it right. Mm -hmm. When my daughter's doing it, she's not going to get it right. Yep. No one's getting, we're all trying to move forward. We're like, you say, we're trying to get to that next ring. Yeah. And that's the that's that's the only thing in all of this that is you should let people um, fail, yeah. without without thinking that there's ill intent, malice, right? right. Um, and and you can tell if there's malice. Considering the source is a huge thing that's yeah. missing. Yeah, and so I would get off stage. Like I did um, a sexual assault bit uh, like two albums ago, mm-hmm. and some woman came up to me and she was like. Uh, so drunk first yeah. of all uh-huh. and uh and she was like i was really excited the same same thing and i said is yeah i said yeah it's upsetting i was trying to work through it and uh i think that everybody else kind of she was like but you don't know and i said no, no i literally just told you exactly <laughs> right okay and uh so but yeah so yeah. considering the source is right huge. exactly but the, the amazing thing about the this you know is 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 if you want to do a bit about something mm-hmm. that isn't necessarily you mm-hmm. you may identify to it by the end of it mm-hmm. you know uh but the you know as as it's outside of your you know whether it's race or sex or any of that yeah if people come up and say the angle is weird and especially if the person is in that marginalized group right you gotta listen you gotta listen and exactly you, and much like another comic giving you advice you may or may not take that advice right but if you listen right and hear it will it'll it gave me brand new angles it gave right me, right and right by the time that joke was working people were coming up and going I'm this is, is you're explaining it right you're doing right, you know right. I'm That's psyched great. about that and, yeah. and then of course punchlines please to, p- right. baby Jesus please be funny be, things uh, get things are so much more palatable when yeah. they're funny let there be a punchline at the end of <laughs> yeah. your at the end of your journey Casey. right yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah. I'm so glad you're working on that. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. does it make me laugh at the end of it yeah, or in the please. middle a couple of times? <laughs> you know who really, with the listening thing, that the thing, uh, 
uh, when Hari Kanabolu did yeah. his thing on uh, on on The Simpsons. Oh on, yeah, yeah. On Abu. Apu. Apu. And uh, and I went into it and I was like, oh, he was that character. I always saw him somewhat. There was a nobility to him. Like he was he was smarter than everybody else. And he but he had a, like I never saw him as. I thought he was well written. I thought he was. Uh, there was that he was written with some compassion some compassion and that he was smarter yeah. than homer and he was like you know there was some there were stereotypical things mm-hmm. but it uh, and i was just trying to like but i was trying to watch harry's documentary mm-hmm. and i came out of it really realizing you he cares enough to carry the weight of whatever it made him feel since he was a child Mm -hmm. and now as a grown successful comedian Mm -hmm. is spending a lot of time filming and making this to tell this story he's trying to tell the world in so many ways this made me feel bad. This isn't good. <laughs> and it you doesn't have, have anything to do with me You have to listen going, to that. No, it looks all right. Yeah, I don't right get it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Well, your dad didn't look like that yeah. and your f- uncle didn't talk like that. And I'm yeah. telling you from my heart and soul, <laughs> this, this this was off for me. This isn't cool. That's You just, just got to shut up and be like, all right, then I will I, right. I'll be able to listen to that. There was a football player on the, on the <laughs> Washington football team when it was named the Redskins yeah. who literally said, it doesn't matter what we think. If it hurts their feelings, change the name. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and he was a black man. And he was just like. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And they're crying out for, they're crying out. They're, they're not, they're not, a, 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 Harry was not like F the world. He no. was like, just listen world. Right. He's like, I'm, <laughs> I'll, I'll break it down for you. Yeah. It's sort of like Black Lives Matter. You know, it's yeah. just like, it's a whole sentence. Mm-hmm. And everybody just stops it at that. And we're, cause <laughs> they, they had to do an LLC. Jesus, you guys. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they had to do a, they had to do an org, a dot org. Yeah. But, um, but Black Lives Matter, um, because comma because you don't seem to be treating them as if they are <laughs> right so please yeah make a, a lot note. are in trouble yes <laughs> <laughs> right exactly <laughs> that this is not actually happening <laughs> we thought we'd point out that yeah. the vision of what you're doing is not yeah 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 no it's, you gotta listen and everybody's trying to be you know everybody decent that i know yeah. is trying to be a good ally right a hundred percent and that, that, the and i uh staycation you guys staycation uh, gotta got, got get back into it because here's the thing there's there's two of my brothers um uh they they want to be good allies i want to be a good ally mm-hmm. i'm not always good at, i'm an okay ally <laughs> right. right like i'm like godzilla when he's the good guy <laughs> still a lot of crap gets broken uh, where you're just like screaming i what will you want to hear what i learned when i saw hidden figures yeah <laughs> anyway but uh the uh uh but the two of my brothers were like there might be more literally said to me in different situations you know there might be more sexism in the world than you might know about and i was like wow man um, and then I thought about it. And first of all, they're just trying to be good allies. Uh-huh. And second of all, they might be right. Cause I've spent a good portion of my time, not, mm-hmm. you know, just sort of going along, just going, right. Well, it's not going to matter. Yeah. It's not going to help it. Right. If I had, and, and if I bring it up, everybody's going to be sad. Right. All the boys <laughs> around me are going to be sad. They're not going to book me cause I make them sad. Yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Now I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm, you made me so uncomfortable. <laughs> but I, there's there's like these dinosaur dude comics who, um, because, okay, so I will tell some younger, some of the younger crowd, right? Yeah. Stories that I think are funny. Uh-huh. That turn out are horribly sexist. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And I think, and I was told that they were funny. Right, right. That, uh, that if I had a sense of humor, <laughs> I'd be laughing along. Yeah. And so I was, uh, so I'll tell the story. And yeah. all of them, men and women in their 20s and 30s, the younger comics, yeah. will be like, what happened? <laughs> and they're always shocked and appalled. And You're like, that's just, that was just called living. <laughs> no, was just, you didn't think that was, you didn't think that was funny? And, uh, so, that's the way it worked back then. And But I might be, but it made me realize that I might be the last generation of women comics that you ever hear say this sentence. He's a nice enough guy. You just don't want to <laughs> be alone with him. Right. He's, he's okay. Just stand by the door. Yeah. Just I'm know just... what he is. <laughs> yeah. But there is that thing. There is... There is that thing of uh, of wanting the world to be different and 
not being naive to the way that the world is. Yes. Yes. Which I'm... And living in the world. Which I'm trying to walk through with raising young women Mm -hmm. is like, I'm all for it. I'm all for doing what you want to do, dressing how you want to dress, calling out the guys on their behavior and all that kind of stuff. But we still have to keep our wits about us because... Oh, we all have to there's live a, a lot little of, defensively. There's still a lot of Very, guys out there that aren't reading the pamphlets and yeah. aren't ready to go on to the next phase yet. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's a, yeah. it's it's complicated. Living defensively isn't the isn't the problem. I mean, insisting that yeah. young women and women people in general, because we're, we're it's I, I don't even recognize it anymore Mm -hmm. right i mean i'm just naturally right living slightly defensively yeah yeah and it's fine Mm -hmm. uh no it isn't but it's fine and but it's It's still uh, the wild it's still uh, there's still trouble there are there are people that aren't don't have your best interest at all yeah and um and there you know i was talking to somebody today because i don't uh i don't drink anymore Mm -hmm. but when i did drink someone was saying you know you were you were so fun when you drank you were, uh-huh. It was so funny, and I was like, "Was I?" Because mm-hmm. I mean, I I tended to black out mm-hmm. somewhat, and um, but I remember making decisions. Like I have in my, and if I dug deeper, I could probably find more. But probably a half a dozen stories that end, <laughs> yeah. and then I wasn't killed, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, I wasn't living defense. I, right, I was living right, defensively right. until I you know, literally chose to say, screw it. Right. I, I get to, I get to make bad life decisions right. and, and, yeah. and not be punished for them or be punished yeah. for them. Cause I'm sick of living like this, Right. which is something, right. you know, like there's so many getting to, getting to make regrettable decisions mm-hmm. is such a luxury. Yeah. And it's not something that women get to do mm-hmm. that often. And it's, yeah. And it leads to bad decisions. Right. Because if if everyone could make more b- l- l- yeah. regrettable decisions, yeah. then you wouldn't be forced to just go, yeah, no, I'll get in the car. Right. And uh, Yeah, and that, right. It's almost like a release valve. It's yeah. like, psh, just there was, okay. There was a kid I knew uh, who wanted to get, and that kid is probably dead. This, uh, this was a terrible <laughs> life decision, and we couldn't stop him. But And we tried to talk him out of it, but there yeah. was no. He wanted to, ta- uh, he was probably 22 years old. He wanted to tattoo a train, a steam engine, uh-huh. train around his neck, uh-huh. and he wanted to get his ear removed. Oh, God. So that the. Uh, it was a smokestack? Yeah. Oh, no. So the ear hole could be the smokestack, and no one uh, would do it. So he cut his own ear off. Ah. Uh, he put it in a jar and he showed it to people. Ah. Uh, I totally stopped hanging out with him. Yeah. But the thing is, is. <laughs> right to the dating apps. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't much older, but the thing is, but I was like 26 or 27. Yeah. And I was like, you're not going to, yeah. you're always going to regret that. And, uh, and um, that's brutal. <laughs> but he, you know, tattoos. and Yeah. Yeah. Now I know there is that thing like, because you do for your own, uh, with, with out regard to how it's going to work out in the long term for yourself, you do make those decisions just to see what it feels like. That's what growing is like. It's right. You do all of those things and you just hope that they're never bad enough where. Right. And, and, and if there's, and if you come from a place where you get to make those decisions, where you right. get to like and recover you, from them and recover from them and you want to protect yeah. women. Yeah from making regrettable decisions yeah that's your whole rationale for saying well you shouldn't get an abortion Mm -hmm. and you're just like (laughs) i've actually thought it through i've spent my entire life not being able to make regrettable decisions this is a decision i seriously regret if i don't do this yeah yeah and uh (laughs) and so but it's you know there's this control nonsense where you're just like okay but it's yeah but again you 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 live your life and you can't live you know you can't live in despair you and mm-hmm. you have to be happy it's one of the things um the bastards hate that of course is if you could find happiness in what is often uh, a very stressful anxiety ridden life you know? so do you think that those bunnies were actually happy i think that those bunnies found some happiness in 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 the shining wire yeah and accepted yeah, they did. They, yeah. they did. They were like, well, this will be my life. Right. And I will be, because they asked the, the traveling bunnies were like, 
seriously, you guys got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And you want to come with me? One bunny went with him. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the rest of the bunnies were like, some of them were kind of like dead eyed. You're right. Were, or depicted as such. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But some of them were depicted as people who were like, no, this is the, this, this is, is pretty good. This is the sacrifice I make <laughs> to live a sweet life. And yeah. I'm, I'm almost done with my novel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question. Okay. We got to wrap up. Oh yeah. We're, Oh, this is good. Duration, man. Um, all right, two questions. Uh, will you be taking nerds home with you? I will not. Okay. And the next question is, <laughs> um, you're chili. Yeah. Uh, beans or no beans? No beans. Me too. Don't mind beans in Me other neither. people's chili. Love beans. But when I make a chili, mm-hmm. just meat. Yeah. Yeah. And seasoning. Yeah, Texas. Yeah. A little uh, onion, a little onion and pepper to start. It's a, I, Saute I, it. I, I did, uh, yeah, I did onions and just uh, as your little base. Yeah, just base, and then a lot of spice, obviously. Yeah. Can it of uh, chipotle? Forgot how hot they were. Oh. And then uh, <laughs> overnight, I had to fish them out, and then I had to uh, <laughs> when I served it with the cornbread, I had to. Uh, Put the plain yogurt. Here you go. I a little <laughs> jar of plain yogurt yeah, for you. Right. We have the sour cream out. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. We don't have any sour cream. <laughs> so now we're like, eh, oh, we always awesome. have yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, take as much or all of the candy. I have to keep the bowl, though. I'll, yeah, the bowl I'll get in yours. trouble if the bowl doesn't come home. Oh, yeah. You don't want to lose the bowl. <laughs> Staycation is available now. Everywhere that you go on YouTube, no, no, on YouTube, no, no. If this comes out tomorrow, yeah, November sixteenth. Oh shit, balls. Okay, November sixteenth. Yeah. All right, cool. It'll well, be available. Uh, I think. I think there's an exclusive the week before November sixteenth okay. that'll be on Pandora and Sirius XM. I love this. I love this because it's such a uh, a proven model that comedy fans really want to digest comedy and yeah like Sam Morell, I always use him as the example of he just puts out good jokes and at Chad the time Daniels. at the time no one really was making a contract with him and he, yeah. he can't stop so yeah. he just put it up and he's got millions of people who are into it into as it. does Chad Daniels so yeah. great so uh all the success all the success all to right. you too my friend you're the best all right, there you go. The great Jackie Cation, super smart. I mean, she just bounces from subject to subject. She's so damn funny. I love her so much. Staycation is coming out on November 16th. We'll remind you again uh, next week when we, when we, uh, when we do this. Um, she took a lot of good candy. She didn't leave that much. Uh, there's some good stuff. I'm going to give it to Aaron. All right, enjoy, everybody. We'll see you next week.